Hi, my name is Scott Powell, Manager Director of Technolab Marketing. We thought we'd put a series of videos together to help end users service our portable and stationary dissolved oxygen monitoring systems. I hope they're of help to you. Servicing a portable dissolved oxygen sensor. Basically, when we change a membrane, when we should we change a membrane? When the reading's probably fluctuating or taking time to stabilise um, and, and or giving the incorrect reading or actually the membrane is physically damaged. Other than that, there's real no routine maintenance that needs to be done on the probe that needs to be changed just for the sake of changing. Uh, so we only change them when they, when they are giving that erroneous reading. To, to service a probe, remove the, the, uh, the cap. There's a small amount of electrolyte inside. We just dispose of the electrolyte. The next important thing to do is, and it is actually the singularly the most important aspect of this dissolved oxygen sensor, without any electrolyte present, being a galvanic cell has a, an anode and a cathode on the end, without any electrolyte, there's no voltage output from the probe whatsoever. So the meter, when the probe is clean and dry, Everybody can see that? Should be reading zero, basically zero out from the, from the probe. If you're finding that there's a background reading, like uh, between with milligrams per litre, say 0.1 or 0.2 milligrams per litre, this probe should really read zero. So what we do is uh, give the probe a bit of a clean. Of course, what we find over time, as oxygen molecules move through the membrane, they they coat the the anode and basically pushes the membrane further and further away from the from the, an, the actual anode and in doing so it slows the response time of the probe down it doesn't make it drift or give it an erroneous reading it just takes longer to stabilize so a scouring pad is the most important thing it comes as part of our kit and it's important just to give the end of the probe and I rotate the probe as I'm doing it so I don't give score marks but really trying to make the, the, the cathode nice and bright um, also, this can be used to remove any, any white powdery deposits around the probe. That basically is the salt that's uh, basically dried out of the electrolyte. It can, and if it gets quite stubborn, you can dip that into a little bit of uh, fresh water and give it a clean with, uh, give it a bit more of a clean with, a, with the scouring brush. So basically the probe's nice and dry and clean and bright. The meter reads zero. So now we're ready to change, change the membrane. To change a membrane, we have the universal tool, which not only opens the back of the meter, but basically has, takes the template, which is holding the membrane in place. And it's a matter of rotating this quite a few times, 30 times, to take, to take the template out of the cap. I just gently blow and uh, or a little screwdriver can pop out just the membrane alone. More importantly, there's an O-ring that's sitting down on the inside of this cap. Something sharp, a fingernail, or just a, just loosely grab it with a small screwdriver to remove the O-ring. The O-ring and the membrane should be changed at the same time. This then can be rinsed, washed, cleaned, and and uh, any 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 dried uh, white um, powdery crystals can be just dissolved away and cleaned. To put the membrane in, we have a pack of 10 membranes and O-rings. First thing to do is to grab an O-ring. O-ring always in first. The, the O-ring goes towards the bottom. Once again, it's handy having something to poke the, the O-ring into place at the bottom. The uh, membrane, which is can be handled, but I try not to grab it with, uh, with glue. We want to keep it in good nick. OxyGuard use separators between the membranes, the clear membranes. I have had a few meters back with uh, a green membrane, and uh, wondering why it doesn't work. They're actually a paper separator between the between the membranes, so they don't work too well. We drop the membrane into, roughly into place. Now, the most important thing is you don't have to worry too much about where that's placed, just as long as it's down towards the bottom. We take the template, 
I normally put it onto the key. Don't worry about where the membrane's placed. And we screw about two thirds of the way down. So it's a fair way down. Once it gets fairly almost down to the bottom, we rotate the cap over and this is the, the trick, we gently blow the membrane down onto the, onto the plate. In doing so, if you put the key back in and you start rotating the membrane, the membrane should actually be rotating on top of the template. What this is doing is self-centering the membrane, so now we just screw the template up till it feels home and because the membrane is self-centered, it basically fits perfectly because they're machine cut and then you can put a fair bit of tension onto the cap, uh, not overly tight because we want a nice flat membrane, which this one is, and we don't want any wrinkles in it. The wrinkles are caused by the O-ring not being quite in the right place or, or you haven't had that temp, if you, if you um, haven't placed that, centered that uh, membrane correctly. The problem is a lot of the time of trying to get the membrane towards the bottom and screwing down, you don't know where that membrane's sitting. So the best trick is to invert the membrane and screw up and watch the membrane rotate up to the top. And you get a nice clean membrane. The next step is some electrolyte. I generally fill this up two thirds to three quarters full. It's a little bit over full. Take the probe. and a few turns, flick the side of the meter just to get rid of the air bubbles out, it does breathe quite easily and it will drip out the excess electrolyte and you can screw that quite firm. The membrane is actually quite robust, we can dry the membrane and make sure that the probe's on nice and tight, membrane cap protector and that's done. What you will notice is when you do change the membrane, the actual percent saturation, rather than being 100% with the membrane back on, it's, it spikes quite sharply. It may go up to 200, 250%. What needs to happen now is we need to wait around about the, uh, generally 10 minutes for the probe to equilibrate. And uh, basically that means the probe comes to temperature with the electrolyte and there's balance and you'll find the percent saturation is not varying at all. You'll see this slowly be drifting down at the moment. Most important, the temperature is very stable um, and it will just adapt to the, the uh, equivalent with the, um, the air temperature and the electrolyte temperature. So now it's just a matter of waiting. So we can't use the meter for this, this period because we haven't calibrated and it is settling out. So we'll come back to that in a moment and uh, do a calibrate. Here we are about uh, 10 minutes later. You notice that the, the meter's settled itself out at, uh, at a, or 115%. So to do a calibrate now, we simply go into the menu to calibrate, press OK. OxyGuard sensors are calibrated in air without any uh, saturated air, just straight in air. And it assumes that our air is 100% saturated with oxygen and takes that as the, uh, as the 100%. And being a galvanic cell without any electrolyte present, with a, with that, uh, doesn't give any output, it uses that reference as a true zero. So it's one of the, one of the very rare uh, only DO meters on the market that uses a true zero as its, um, as its zero point and 100% saturation as its, uh, as its uh, um, top measuring point. And in doing so, we get a linear calibration to 100%. And uh, that meter is ready to use.